My first question is, all right, you, uh, how hard was it to get into SpaceX, like, when you applied there and stuff? I had a family member that worked there for quite a long time, so uh, I, ha- I kind of had my foot in the door, and they're hiring people like crazy because there was a, uh, it's like, I think you call it a high turnover rate, um, but they were, they, they, yeah, they, they hired a lot of people in there, and they were, they were constantly hiring people, um, so it was pretty easy to get a job there. Uh, now, um, you, you made videos of Elon Musk, and are they on YouTube? Is that where I'd find them? No, man, you won't find those videos. I don't, I think those videos are gone off the earth. I have a few of the poems now, that I wrote. But are the videos why you were being surveillanced? Because uh, you did yeah. the main videos on him? Yeah. Okay, what did your videos talk about? I, I just uh, like his character and that he's just not, and, and, and just like the uh, work environment in SpaceX. And I guess my hair was like almost looked like Albert Einstein, where like I just had really wild hair. But you could just tell that I it didn't look normal. It wasn't like a hairdo I was going for. I was just like, I looked like the mad scientist. Because like I, I, no, just based on how intense this change that I'm going through um, with my brain I've been made to look crazy to the average person that would see me now were you fired from SpaceX like I know you said you no they tried to get me to quit but I actually got a uh, uh, I think a two two month um, I forget what you call it man but they, they actually gave me a few months pay severance package uh, because I, I, I was just not happy man that, that they I, I felt like I was being bullied and, and harassed and not given a, a fair shake so I uh, now were you so working I, there I, at I the time of the video you made the videos you were still employed there no I, I eventually I, like I said I guess I made them pay me to leave so I gave, they gave me a severance package but I, I left and after that, I just stayed at, at home and I would uh, sell all of my possessions. And I kind of did acquire a decent amount of things. I had like three skateboards, random tools, like decent quality tools. Like I had a couple dozen things that were worth 50 to 100 bucks. In a quarter mile, turn right onto US 15 South, uh, US 401 South. Now, and that was at Long Beach? Yeah. Now, the FBI lady that you were cat sitting for yeah I met, I met her in, in Long Beach we just met well, on a walk but she was surveillance to me I didn't know that at the time that's all I was gonna take the next right onto US 15 south US 401 south I was trying to figure out what was happening in my brain but I called people but everybody was said wouldn't give me any decent answers but I but I called a lot of people and uh, and I got a, and I think that I did I mean I did talk to continue some, on uh, US 15 uh, south for two miles I, I, I was kind of trying to make sense of what's going on in my brain all right now do you think she befriended you if, if you were being surveillance would you have ever met, met her I guess is my no question. I wouldn't have not at all and she, then, she was there for me uh, and did you ever let her know that you knew that I didn't or did <laughs> that didn't come in, that didn't come my <laughs> come to my mind until long after I met her. I didn't know at the time. Now when uh, how long when was the last time you saw her? Uh, before <laughs> Elon Musk put me in a mental hospital, I called her and she never uh, returned my call or uh, or my emails. Now how did he put you in a hospital? <laughs> Were you working at the time or is this after? No man, they, they, I got in a foot pursuit in, in my neighborhood. They chased me down. It, it's in it's in the podcast, but yeah, they they, they chased me down and arrested me um, based on kind of not being very clear. But I, I think it was me sent me sending videos, the videos of Elon Musk. But I just don't think that I was given a, a fair shake very much at all. Uh, I wasn't, man. I wasn't, and. They, they didn't find... I, st- I spent 30 days, I believe, in a, in a mental hospital. I think it was 30 days. It's quite a long time, man. Uh, 30 days straight. And uh, they I just didn't tell them what I was going through. But I didn't... Um, you know, I, I just kept to myself. And I actually meditated a lot. And I was reading a book on 
visualization meditation. So I was doing a lot of visualization meditation while I was in the hospital, um, mental hospital. It was, it was like, and what's funny, I, I think it might have been UCLA is the mental hospital I was in. I think, I'm not sure, I think it is, but I'm, I don't remember. The funny thing is, is I went to UCLA Mindful Awareness Center, which is like kind of like the spiritual kind of, uh, I don't know, you would say the hippie, the Buddhist, the, the yoga area would be the Mindful Awareness Center. I went there and tried to talk to people and they, were, they just were completely kind of not receptive to, to what I had to say. Uh, um, yeah. Now, like, you're, like, it's so funny, because, like, when he was asking, it was a surprise, because you don't... In a quarter mile, a, continue straight you know, onto U.S. 401 South, U.S. 52 you South. You go career pretty much anywhere in the United States, correct? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you worked with SpaceX and all that. So, I don't look at you as, like... I know you're, you're homeless, but you're not the typical homeless person that Continue you're... straight onto US 401 sense? South, like, US no, 52 I'm South. Not, but I've also gone through really gnarly things that people would probably stigmatize or stereotype as symptoms of being homeless. And people don't realize, and I'm not happy about it, and it disturbs the crap out of me. And I don't even like saying it around young men, but I, I, I did uh, uh, try to take my own life several times. And, I, and that's not something that I ever did in my right mind. But I do also believe I am under satellite surveillance. And because I, I'm aware that I have Elon Musk attention, but also that what I know and what I'm going through is an epic odyssey living outside for five and a half years. But I, and I am also unraveling a philosophy on uh, self-mastery as a human being, but just scientifically and medically, how to train your own brain to create the healthiest nerves and muscle fibers in your entire body. And that is your main focus and main way to do physical exercise or, or PE or uh, uh, meditate is to, or pray, honestly, the number one way to pray is sit in silence and focus on your body for 20 to 30 minutes a day, twice a day at the least, and just focus on complete silence, absolute complete silence for 30 minutes a day, twice a day, and learning to focus on your body and your breath without your mind wandering into the past or present thought. And the whole exercise is to try to get yourself for that entire half hour to not think about past or present thought, but stay focused on your breath and focusing on your body and just relaxing and feeling your, your body in so many different ways for extended periods of time. Okay, when you're in the tent for seven days fasting. Yeah. Now, I told you about my igloo experience. It's 48 hours. And it, I was in there with people, and I, like, drove me nuts with the ADHD, and I'm staring at these small rolls. Your tent's a little smaller. What are you... Are you meditating in there? Do you exercise in there? Are you... you I imagine you don't have a phone. You don't have any kind of electric... Any kind of contact to the outside. Am I correct? This uh, is... I, I usually didn't... No, I didn't have any access to the outside. I didn't have a phone at that time. I usually haven't had a phone during this past five and a half years. I have a pay-as-you-go phone now, but I, I haven't had a phone most of this time. But I do play music, and I, and I have a smart device, often without service, but with downloaded music. Like, how do you keep your sanity in there is what I'm... I, 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 I know, you know what you were doing with... for discipline. I get it. I get it. But how? How does a person stay so disciplined my, my without My brain out? is different now to where I think that I've reached a neat state of zen or inner peace or relaxed calmness that the past several years I'm happy sitting nowhere doing nothing for several hours a day. and I. But I've actually gotten comfortable doing that 
where that's kind of where I, I just have essentially a high level of happiness and contentment and calm and my story is very complicated man where I've I do claim that I've I state claim I don't know how you would say that I've yelled at the sky at the satellites at the surveillance people surveillance of me for thousands of hours and by thousands of hours I mean thousands of hours I mean I've spent three to six hours a day you know maybe half the time I've been outside just yelling as loud as I can uh yeah, like like uh, uh, it, it's just it's disturbing, but um, now do you believe in coincidences in life, or do you believe everything is related with the way? I think everything that, in life happens for a reason, but that that reason cannot be known at the time that it happens. Absolutely, and it also can the reason can change. See, I agree. Like, like, that, but that's I, that, I know, that's my, God. Yes, but like, see if if my kids would not have quit, uh, what, did you spit water? Me? <laughs> if my kids would not have quit yesterday and went home, I would not have been in that position to meet you and get you, uh, take you out of the rest of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I believe in stuff. Like, I tell my kids all the time when we're walking and we don't get picked up for hours that, hey man, things happen for a reason. Um, you know, we just don't know what the reason is at the time, etc. Uh, so I definitely 100% think on that. I agree with you. Now, um, not to touch and uh, bring up a subject, but you said you you would attempt to take your life a couple times. Yeah, man. I and I know in your podcast you had mentioned something about uh, like people do stuff like that for attention, etc. Do you think you, there's three different ways you could be looking at this? Did you do that for attention? Confused about what was going on in your head like you just didn't know when the or was it out of depression um I would have to say probably all of the above none of the above and some um I mean I'm glad you're it didn't work because we wouldn't be sitting here right now no Um, I I said I recognize in my storage unit uh, five years ago, probably four years ago, um, that I wasn't in control of the thoughts in my head, and I've had a whole lot, many, many of supernatural experiences where I have had to just, uh, I've done physical activities, achievements, um, and defended myself, you know. In, a, in in kind of a supernatural way of it happening, and it, and it's happened. It's it's really neat, but it's kind of obvious if you would have kind of recognized that everywhere I go, it's people saying, "Do you believe in destiny, or that we were supposed to meet today?" Uh, and I do believe in it. Dubsville Church of God. Um, I, I, I do believe I do believe in that. Uh, people just don't still just don't realize who I am or what I'm going through or what I've endured. Where the the, the amount of amount of emotional dur- strain and duress I've been in for the past five years it is um, a, a, a a shocking level that would have anybody kind of really. Um, I, I think mainly just sad for me, and, and just just sad, sad and, and really, um, I think compassionate. But it's it, it's hard to put into words. But what I've endured for five and a half years, living outside, where I don't want to live outside. If there was a solution to me living outside, I, I would, I, I would. I would try to I would try to find a solution um, or I would I would have a I would I would try to have a solution man but my brain is in a very strange place now you left to, to get to the homeless position you left San Diego to go right up home Long Beach what, long, or long Beach but I left from San Diego but yeah, do you did you know at the time did you think in the time even just a little bit I'm not coming back I'm I'm not I'm leaving this lifestyle of having a house, having things in general, 
to did you know that or just did you get to Seattle and feel it and said like I belong here did, did you know did you do you know what I'm saying? Did you did you think you were gonna do it, or did you get there and that's when it like you looked around and was like, I'm staying longer? Because you obviously didn't plan it. Correct? When I went to Seattle. Seattle, yes, to write the poem. No man, the thing is, is that I've never really, I haven't had anybody in my life that cared for me that much, that cared what I was doing or where I was for so many years. That if even in me going somewhere, there's nobody that's fought, that's keeping up with me. There's nobody that's keeping track of me or that really cares what I'm doing in my life. And so when I went and did, did something, I really didn't have anybody behind me saying, hey, okay, Kyle, uh, uh, I'm here if you need me, or, you know, uh, call uh, you're, you're, I'm, I'm always there for you, or however, whatever it is, I don't have that. But more so, I, I, I have the, the mentality that I really don't have anything. And, and, so, and so when I went there, I didn't leave anything because I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't, I kind of got rid of everything that I had. I, I left my pets, and, and that's something that disturbs me because I normally, they, I had three, uh, two cats and a dog, and they meant a lot to me. And I, if I was in my right mind, which I know that in many, several years, I haven't been in my right mind, like five and a half, six years, I haven't been in my right mind, I would have never left my animals where I haven't seen my animals, any of my animals in six years. And that they were what healed me. When I got happy, it wasn't a uh, uh, family support or a lot of friends. It was the fact that I had three pets in a one-bedroom apartment that were constantly giving me affection while I was self-reflecting and, you know, kind of doing my own kind of healing, but not with much support whatsoever. More, more so animal support, pet support was my was my emotional source of love and and I think what you, I guess what you would say companionship and, and affection was uh, a, a whole lot from two cats and a dog. What happened? What happened to them? You left them behind. Uh, as far as I know, man, I got uh, my my one of my female cat uh, Will. She she died uh, at, uh, shortly after I went outside. Uh, my dog Tyson died. Uh, that makes me really sad. He meant a lot to me. And I don't know about Snowy. I haven't heard anything about him. <coughs> and I, I don't know. That that makes me, it makes me really sad. Uh, I don't claim to be in, in a good place anymore in my life. Uh, because I've also said that I've been at, kind of looking for help to try to understand what I'm going through with my, with my life. And uh, nobody can understand or kind of give me support like I... I, I you know, sufficiently to where I should be having, should get support in, in healing people and challenging my brain and, and my ability to support people psychologically. And uh, a new local. Have you tried to do research on yourself, like, like on the brain itself? I know you talked about the gurus and the different things, uh, the muscles. Like, do you have you gone deeper yourself? You seem like I'm pretty intelligent. No, I've gone very deep into myself, man. That's the problem is I've, I've kind of learned so much, and I've kind of learned so much about healing, but I didn't mean to to, find, to like kind of find out how to heal PTSD, which is what the ego is ultimately is PTSD to 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 one extent or another. Well, explain the ego again to me. The, the ego things. is trauma to the brain based on. on past experiences uh, uh, and, and it's the development of negative thought patterns or negative reactions uh, during kind of uh, experiences in life I guess you would say um, but uh, your, your ego and PTSD is the same thing although you can get PTSD from something making you very angry or sad or, or disturbed for a long period of time, those kind of things where it, it, you think about it for several days and that's all you think about and your brain hurts from thinking about it, the, the state and the emotional state you're in and the fact that you're stuck in that, focusing on that topic, you're, you're kind of burning the, 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 the wiring in your brain to, to be sensitive to that area or to have scarring in that area and, and that that is what... Uh, post-traumatic stress is but it is healable 
I just didn't realize that I, I was kind of going, I, I was trying to heal post-traumatic stress from a lot of different areas from, uh, you know, five, uh, therapy with a, a doctor of psychology, a psychologist, no pharmaceutical drugs for the most part. Um, and then I was doing EMDR therapy with another doctor. That, that's a, a fast acting kind of uh, uh, healing uh, therapy for post-traumatic stress that heals long-term trauma and like usually there's people that have long-term trauma and PTSD they have triggers they have unhealthy uh, uh, habits or reactions they can't control and that's what PTSD does to people and healing it with this EMDR therapy helps a lot but I also did do uh, psilocybin mushrooms um is that with the couple the, that you were talking in the iPod? No, I did it several times. One time was with them. But for the most part, I did it by myself. And I, I do a lot or a high dosage or strong uh, where I, I try to make it a really, really intense, strong uh, experience. But I, I, I also enjoy guiding people, and I, I think it's a lot of fun. But, but an unbelievable healing tool where the light show that goes on in your brain close your eyes and listen to some music or just close your eyes and 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 honestly it's really really good for you to close your eyes and just feel watch your own brain but there's a light show going on from those mushrooms but that's also getting deeper inside your brain physically where that the, the light show that you're seeing in your brain is also physically happening in your brain but that's be activating parts of your brain that you usually don't get to because you, you don't have this that kind of experience in your brain. So you're loosening up the tension from from psychological traumas from having intense uh, uh, psychedelic experiences with psilocybin mushrooms. Okay, now when you're having these experiences, do you put yourself away from people, away from lights, away from things so you don't have any kind of weird trips or weird visions? I usually do... I usually do half of each for the first half hour or first three hours. I uh, uh, like to be by myself. Darlington, turn your phone. And then, see, like, my next comment is gonna, is like, it had to be hell for you in uh, the COVID because I got the few hours that we've already rode together. Dude, you are like, you like to talk to everybody you're very nice you're very polite to every single person you see i watch you say hi if they're on the side of the road wave and that had to be hard during a time when everybody wanted to, you to stay six feet away because you seem like like asking the people about the Pen pennsylvania and stuff you you are in seem intrigued you get drawn to people like strangers that you don't even know and you, I've watched you carry on conversations several times in our few hours with other people that just meeting instantly and shake and like that guy like it seemed like at the gas station he was grumpy and then you started talking to him and he was funny and then at the end do you know what I'm saying like yeah. so uh, two parts with that was it hard during the uh, at times because you couldn't get as close to people in the last year um Nittany Lions, Penn State, Nittany is the mountain range overlooking Penn, over, over surrounding Penn State. And That's he's, the fun and he's supporting the team, wearing the shirt, and he had no idea where the name came from or what it meant. Yeah, <laughs> but but, that is, uh, you know. but and like and then my second part to the question is: Okay, as a healer and a talker, did you find living in like tent cities and on the uh, uh, streets uh, that? You f that you were able to connect and help talk to people that maybe didn't have somebody else to talk to that needed some kind of therapy? Did you find yourself being a counselor or a mentor or prophet to people out there on the streets yeah, and I, guide them? I was talking to a lot of people and um, I, I, mean, I, did, I did talk to a, a, lot of, a lot of people and I often made it a point to try to talk to every single person or you say do. something to every single person. Which is person. good, that's a positive thing, I like that. But what, what I did was for a, a, over a year in downtown Seattle is I held a sign that said love everyone and I would greet people in populated places like the Target by Pike's Market uh, in uh, downtown Seattle. But I, but I was I would greet people for hours a day 
hours and hours a day for up to 12 to two, I think at one time I did 24 hours straight um, I think um, but I would just greet people and I would have conversations but now I understand that as a social as a human being that's always around other human beings to be social but learn to learn how to do it to where you don't take it personally which that's one of the main exercises is to never take it personally but always reach out to people as free often as often as you can and have experiences with people in as many different ways as you can is kind of the meaning of life and how you get the most experiences out of life by I guess creating them from you know putting yourself out there now um what is the hardest thing about being homeless? Because you, you seem to got you got you've got it down better than me about sleeping places and stuff. You gave me some great ideas, um, but like, is it is it being alone? What what do you think would be the hard? Like, if you had to think about it, what is the hardest thing? Because you say you don't want to be homeless. What about the homeless? Don't you like? I don't want to be homeless. Uh, no man, it's the fact that I can't, that you can't navigate places on foot. It's, or, or public, even public transportation is very difficult. But, um, I guess what people don't, what it's hard to verbalize is even though I have a lot of good experiences and I sound, you know, uh, somewhat, uh, clear and concise, I guess, in what I'm trying to say. And so it seems like I'm mostly put together is that when I when in a I quarter leave, mile turn I right onto US 52 outside, south south main going street on these long walks you know or just either way going on these long walks or not I'm I have completely the opposite where I lose my emotions and I'm very ang I'm unbelievably angry and I'm un I'm aware that I'm under surveillance man but I'm not just under surveillance I told you I share a birthday with Elon Musk but take the next Elon right Musk. onto US 52 um, south south main street but also with um, a, a, a guru named Maxic, and that's what continue on US 52 and South for five in miles. My body called muscle control, where my muscles are, are all learning how to independently uh, uh, move. Now, um, say his name again, Malik. Maxic, M-A-X-I-C-K. And he was he 99 years before you. Four ninety-nine years before me to the day. To the day. But that, but muscle control is what I say. Mastering being a human being is, and that's learning how to move every muscle in your body independently, meaning only that muscle moving through its entire range of motion. And that's how you should be praying or exercising on a daily basis. Is developing the ability to control every single muscle independently in your body and, and constantly build that strength but that but what I'm saying is that you can actually gain strength and become stronger by just learning how to focus on flexing every individual muscle in your body you just have to train your body to get into that state which is almost like developing the, the ideal way to do it is with a brand new human being a new baby and teaching them how to feel their bodies at a young age that's the ideal how way do you to do teach it, it? Uh, by 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 touching the baby's body and separating the baby's all the baby's joints in in the in the body and by moving just moving the jo every joint through its entire range of motion and just getting the baby spending the time your time with the baby moving moving the body in silence which is important and, and with nature is probably better than in a house but you can do it in a house too but it's just studying the baby's body and separating the joints and, and, and just massaging every different area of the body and doing it on a regular basis and getting the baby in a habit of working on its body from being a baby. Alright, and that, okay, so is that, I, I loved the story with when you were uh, talking about life, how that the uh, gym, the guy was going through the motions and you were, with you controlling your uh, bicep, how how do you get to that point how to control one muscle any muscle like i it, it's almost like using star wars force like jedi force of your own body correct okay like how how can you get there without without a normal person going and uh um not using psychedelics how can a person 
train their brain to, is it relaxing? Is that what you're doing? Is concentrating? It's relaxing your brain, but also that what I think God wants people to do is have an open mind and be willing to try things where uh, not all things in life are bad and not all drugs are are toxic uh, poison that should never be touched in their you know during your entire life but there are there are and not and not all drugs are equal where there are resources to help you get uh, uh, happier and healthier and more relaxed um, and more kind of in, in enlightened um, now you've experimented with drugs to you know like I've done a lot see, I've done a, a, a is there any, any that had drugs? any effect on you like that you wish you would have never attempted to try that one or anything the, uh, any? you know what I, I wouldn't say that I would say if you ever say I wish I didn't try that one it was because it was too fun it was too it was too enjoyable but as far as I, I've tried dr- drugs just to see what the big deal is with that drug if the stigma behind that drug is as bad as, or, or if the actual reality of the drug is as bad as the stigma and you know I I, uh, I, I, I won't I don't never use needles never use needles for anything actually I did steroids once uh, for, I tried to do a cycle it didn't last a whole cycle but I never never shot anything else but I smoked heroin uh, at, a, at, a, at a beach in um uh, in San Clemente, but like outside in the public, kind of, I, I smoked it. Uh, I believe, or I was in a car. Maybe I was in a car, but anyways, right after that, I slept on the, right there. But that was the, my very first time doing that drug, and it was so unbelievably mild. And it, but it just felt like a, a, a strong sedative. But it was mild considering considering how you know it just it felt like I was just completely relaxed. And, and you know just unbelievably relaxed and, and to a, to a sleepy point but mainly just really like to a state of just kind of euphorically relaxed and and, and, and you know yeah now did um, you ever have to go to rehab like from the drugs that were too fun no 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 but but I, I definitely did get carried away once or twice um, no I mean I would say more than once or twice I've gotten carried away with pot many a times where I use it to an unhealthy degree where I, I think that pot is, is something that's uh, um, you know beneficial but also you know can have negative effects um, now pot's legal in all over Seattle correct was it legal when you first yeah got yeah there? I, I've I've been to pot shops in probably seven to seven to ten different states now uh, I like that I can say that that's kind of cool. I just I just went to uh, Michigan, um, Massachusetts, and uh, I think maybe Rhode Island. But I went to I went to several. Now in your podcast, you also talked about uh, the the visions and um, I don't want to say seeing past lives, but past characters like the the African guy. Yeah. Um, were you doing, was that just meditating or were there any drugs involved in that? No, in, in, in what I believe God is. In a quarter is, mile, turn uh, left onto the I-95 south ramp to Savannah. God is within all of the effort you put into life. And God is the reward of that. Or God is the hardships in life for not seeking challenges and uh, um, obstacles in life. Um, Turn left onto the I-95 south ramp. No, your vision, and you saw no, yourself. How did you know it was you? I, I guess I, I, that... it was just, it was a really profound kind of, while I was sleeping, I just saw uh, that the, the image of an African man that, uh, that I knew was me in a past life, but it, it was just like a, a profound feeling. But ever since then, whenever I'm around black people, or, you know, and by black, I don't mean just African American, but... Uh, Afro Latin, African, whatever they may be, um, I make it a point, or, or I just I feel them very intensely, 
but I feel connected to them. Where I, I feel in a quarter mile, related. merge onto I-95 South. I feel uh, spiritually connected to Africa and Africans, but it's it, within my emotions so genuinely that you can't deny it. And I, and I do say that it is from that experience. Granted, I've studied the culture a lot more in, in the past, uh, uh, you know, several several years. I've studied the culture a lot. But I still just uh, feel very deeply connected to uh, Africans. But but it, but it's 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 continue on I ninety five south for three miles. Now. But I do say, from what you put into life, the effort you put into life, the effort you you put into exploring answer, exploring and investigating life's answers, and, and pursue being a better person in so many ways that there are different things that you can experience in life that are within your brain within your life experiences and that is God but that is exactly what God is and that's how you pursue God is by pursuing answers and being the best version of yourself and I did work at, at food banks at, at, at clothing banks I, I walked around and I, I gave the homeless uh, uh, food and, and clothing on a, on a frequent basis when I was in Seattle and after that uh, in Southern California um, but, you know, now I pick up trash frequently. On Eminem's birthday, I picked up trash, which is uh, October 27th. I picked up trash from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Six big uh, garbage bags, uh, dumpster, you know, full of trash. And, uh, you know, but doing awesome. good things like that on a regular basis, but doing it to where it makes you uncomfortable and you actually sacrifice greatly within... The benefit of something outside of you, selflessly, that you know, and do that, doing this do that in so many yourself, ways. Not, not for attention. Not you're doing it just. You're doing it for yourself, not to bring attention to yourself for doing it. Correct. Like, yeah, and that's what it is about: is doing it for yourself uh, and being selfless. And it's like giving away something that means something a lot. That means a lot to you and that it hurts like you didn't want to give it away because you liked it but then practicing and giving things away until it doesn't hurt anymore and, and that's kind of what you want to do in a lot of different ways of life is detach from the outcome of and recognize what actually can and can and what should and shouldn't affect you emotionally and you shouldn't hold on to anything anything material emotionally um now, do you miss well, anything material? Like, the, what? Like, like, do you miss a bed? In half a mile, keep left to stay on I-95 no, South. I, I like looking at vehicles a lot now, and I, I miss having a vehicle. Um, I miss having a bed a great deal. Um, I miss having a normal life in general, man. I, I mean, you know, I, I, this like like I said, this podcast is very upbeat, and that's that's good that it's upbeat. Keep but left to stay on I-95 state. South. Um, I'll share your podcast too. Also, yeah, I, it's, it, it's very interesting. I really like it. I, I just I continue I on I ninety five south for one hundred eighty four miles. I don't feel well, and I'm not. You know, I'm not. I, I I'm just even though I, I I'm in a neat place. I think right now I'm in a very complicated transit place of transition, where I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And it's just, and I'm so uncomfortable, but I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but I'm just, I'm continuing to move around until where I, I find out where I'm supposed to be. Now, do you mean that as in a literal spot of the world to live or a place to be in your mind? Both. Both? But yeah, but, but, I was, but mainly, but mainly just with, with like, I need to, I, you know, I'm an honorably discharged veteran man that's had good jobs and I, and I had a good reputation as a, as a hardworking, you know, honest person, and, and I, you know, should be trying to find some kind of way to get out of my this situation. I, I do say that God, I, I have a very, 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 very close relationship with God, where He's, I do feel Him right over my shoulders all the time. But at this point, to me. I feel that I've endured more than anybody should endure within living outside for five and a half years, 
turning 40 in a few weeks and not having a family, where I claim I haven't had a family most of my life, I had very little support or care. Almost all of my life, I didn't have. I had very little support or care, and I, I, uh, I you know, I, uh, you I want a family, and that, but that means everything to me because I never had a family. But people don't realize that I really never had a family. I'm almost turning forty, you know, and, and I, I'm just, uh, I've reached a certain state in a certain place in my mind where my will is just shot knowing that I've been under surveillance for five years but what they've watched is me trying to hurt myself many a different times scream profanities for thousands of hours and you know and sit in misery and like in a kind of a, a lost state where I may not be miserable or I may be miserable but I can sit somewhere for three to twelve hours straight and just do absolutely nothing and that's what I do on most days where I'm not the most productive, I'll do, I'll get something done almost every day, but for the most part, what I do every day is I lay there in a state of shock and <coughs> and depression. <coughs> now, are you people watching when you are watching? Like, yeah, are you, I, I, I are usually, you watching the world go by? I usually have to be around people, and it makes me feel better. But now, look at that number, 777777. Yeah. That's nice, I like that. I thought number. I said Eminem. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I have to, you know, I've, mainly it's always been that I have to be in populated places um, to kind of stay, uh, to, you know, to people, uh, I can greet people and, 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 and get people bubbly and, and upbeat on, on a regular, on, frequently. I guess you would say. Um, now, can you read people pretty well? Like you could look at somebody and read their emotions, kind yeah, of feel I, what they're feeling. I can read them well, but I, I, I just, I've kind of on a on a on a good day when I when I feel, you know, uh, when I, I feel like I, I want to live, <laughs> you know, when I have when I when, when I'm when I do try to greet people and and I. I, I doing it well, it is a really fascinating uh, social ability, and that is just a, a, an ability with, you let me hang out with somebody for 15 minutes, their heart is going to be triggered, where they're, they're gonna, they'll, feel, they'll feel a very neat emotional experience, but that's what I give people almost every time that I see them, but more so that's the constant experience I'm giving people because I'm looking at things through a perspective of love, of self-improvement, of uh, uh, positivity, of optimism. But that's how I'm looking at life and every and everybody that I talk to. But it is finding what you love and and, and how to how how to be driven or, or inspired by what you love. And, uh, and in that, you have to trigger the heart of people in that area. And I've just gotten, have an ability to do it, even if it's, with, if it's with children or pets, it's just trigger their emotions. But it, it is within emotionally positive experiences. But I, I also, I do say it, and I, I, I do hope I'm right because I say it frequently, but I, I don't, I, I, I'm the only one that I've ever heard, told myself this. I, I've never heard anybody else say it. I know that I'm funny. People say, tell me that I'm funny, and, and but I, I believe that that's my that I'm also very gifted. Where I'm I'm I'm, I'm really humorous. Like like that's that's kind of a, a, like I actually have imbalances to where I'm not gifted in certain areas of life, uh, and it's very obvious that I kind of seem like a dunce in certain areas of life. Sense of direction, you know, I have zero sense of direction. I have zero memory. Um, uh, <coughs> very poor focus. But I have, I also have, uh, uh, you know, gifted, gifted areas uh, in, in my brain. Now, what, like, I, I don't know how to word this, another say like this. What's it gonna take for, like, I like in life, people say like to say if I'm an alcoholic until I hit rock bottom, till I get fixed, and I'm not saying you're broken, <laughs> but at all. I don't mean to sound like that. But what is it going to take? What are you looking for the take that you'll know when you don't need to be homeless 
for anymore. Uh, check it out. My grandpa died and it broke my heart because I've never dealt with death before, but my grandpa dying was the first time I've really dealt with death. That's his sweatshirt right there. It says limited edition grandpa. Yeah. He was the one person, the one family member in my life that I guess excited me more than any other family member that I've ever had. But by a lot, he just meant a lot to me and I, and I really looked up to him a lot. Um, and everything that I'm going through outside and the, the, the uh, lack of um, support I have, emotional support, financial support, any kind of support that I have from my family, for the most part, where I actually absolutely am grateful that they, they have helped me at certain times uh, a, a decent you know decent amount. But um, uh, since you've been homeless, your family has. Yeah. So like, if you 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 if you you called one of your family members like and needed help, like just say I dropped you off in the middle of nowhere and you need help, they'd be able to. They would. They're you're not ostracized. They would help you. The there odds for you. are that I would I would do it myself and I wouldn't call them for help. I, 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 I was just I, giving an example. I, I've never, I haven't called them for help in I don't know how long. Um, because of having my 40th birthday soon, I may ask, um, I may ask some family members to help pay for a hotel room for me for a day or two and, um, and you know, and maybe give me a few bucks. Uh, but I, I, I'm just in a st state, my morale, is in a low state at a certain point because I've been doing this al alone for so long, but people don't realize, even though I am really good at greeting people and such, when it comes to my own family, they kind of have a, a different reaction to where none of them are very, uh, 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 receptive in a beneficial way based on me not being able to explain what I'm going through, based on me not understanding what I'm going through, based on me being overwhelmed with what I'm going through, that nobody else can understand it. And it's just been several years where, you know, this has been six years of this essentially almost of, of me going through all this. That's a long period of time, man. Are they, are they almost in a sense of, Kyle, why are you doing this? You're smart enough that you could get a job anywhere could get a house are they like they don't is it they don't understand your head yet like they're they don't I don't understand my head so I don't blame them for not understanding I understand head. why you're doing it you're doing it because you don't understand your head I, and you're going you're you're finding yourself you, you literally I, like, yeah but my, my grandpa dying was was just a way of me just kind of saying or understanding that something's clearly wrong. Something's clearly wrong in my life when my closest female relative, my aunt, who is my mom's sister, died since I've been outside. She was she was dog she was looking after my dog who I had for eight years. He died in that house. I never went and saw him. My dog, my aunt, my mom's sister, who's my mom's sister, and my now my mom's father, my grandfather. Very, it was a very small family. There, she's, he, you know, he's dead as as well now. Um, How do you find out being homeless? What's that? Uh, I mean, I, I have I have internet now, and you know, uh, e I get email so and emails. Email side, but uh, uh, you know, but I, I just never really had a good relationship with my family for a long period of time, I've kind of been known as, uh, you know, difficult or, 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 or maybe I've been known as a problem child or a bastard child, but I never, I never really had any support or mentorship at all in my life. My grandfather was, you know, a, a good laugh and, you know, and a little bit of money, you know, on, on the random occasion. Um, but but you know, now, uh, were you a bad hard. child? Like, did you get in trouble? Yeah, uh, I was. Just, I was. Kid, I was mouthy, and uh, mainly, I, mainly, I was just. I was mouthy, and I, I think I had a way where I just pissed everybody off with my mouth, and it was a brutally honest, is what it was. But I was frequently brutally honest. But but somehow, in, in whatever kind of kid I was, is that. Everybody seemed to want to hold a grudge on me and not teach me how to do something differently or tell me what I was doing wrong, but hold a grudge on me or something like that to where I never really understood what the problem was. But, but people, I just regularly in my life, 
become detached from people. And I don't, I don't know why, or, or but it, but it, but it happens on a on a regular basis. Now you've you've been in the psych wards, and I know you only <laughs> tell them what you want them to hear. Yeah. But has anybody ever diagnosed you with any kind of spectrum of autism or anything? Has, like no, I I do think that my that what I have going on in my brain and my abilities, which is very neat, man, my ability to heal physically. It's a phenomenon that uh, phenomena, phenomenon, phenomena. That if you if you were to, to see it or experience it, you can tell that my joints crack when I massage somebody else to where you can. But also their joints crack to where my joints and their joints crack together when I when I massage somebody or when I work out the tissue uh, uh, because I, I have a neat connection to everybody. But it, but it's not normal. It's not. I've never seen anybody in, in, in my life have this kind of connection where as soon as I touch somebody, both of our joints are cracking as I'm moving you. Um, but that's, you know, I, I have, but I'm, I'm, I'm gifted, but I also know that I'm imbalanced to where I am. I do kind of appear to be a savant, um, you know, and, and I, I've kind of come to accept that. Well, I'm trying to accept it, but I'm overwhelmed and I, I'm have trying to accept my life, but I don't have anybody that, that really can understand what I'm going through, even my family, to kind of help me understand or accept my life but my life but I don't I, my life is just you know uh, uh, it's just I, I know that it's very different and, and I, I also know that I will be of uh, uh, I guess not notoriety but of, on, of, of demand people will pull, people will, will want to hear what I have to say and what I what I think because it is just a, a neat perspective and and, and journey where, where there is a God there and uh, is he is he working for me I, I, I you know I, I, at times he is but he's making me hurt way more than I ever thought I could hurt in my life um, and the, and it's it's in the most painful of ways which is time we're living outside for five and a half years now all right um one thing you said earlier I don't remember if it was just us talking or on the iPod uh, whatever you said, it reminded me of, because I have this card that says Michael, Hebrew meaning he is like the Lord. So you were like, almost saying like, you, we, we all should be God-like, so in God's image and different stuff. Do you, and I'm using God and Jesus the same, right? Do you ever, do you feel that Jesus' mind and was working like your mind? But no, I think that more Jesus, aware. I think Jesus didn't have uh, technology or, or, and, and, and such a the evolution of a human being was was so less advanced that I think that Jesus went through a lot less um, now the, with going with what you were talking about and the muscles and the massaging and everything and being able to control muscles do you think a lot of his miracles were the ability because he knew the human body and was able to Jesus yes to, I, I, I think that the, like a, a lot of those guru. are are folk tales and uh, and have been glorified and, and glamorized and I don't I don't believe much of the Bible um, I do believe there was a Jesus I also believe I for, I also don't believe that he was ever literally died. He never literally died on the cross, and I believe that Mary was actually his wife, not his mom. So I, my views of the Bible are very different, um, and I, I so that's that's you know. So, so I, I don't really uh, I don't focus just on the Bible. Hinduism and Buddhism are more based on controlling your brain and your body and long-term control of, of the brain and the body. And so I do tend to focus more on the Eastern philosophies, the consciousness-based philosophies, because they are more based on a, a, a medical, uh, a state of medical health uh, uh, or well-being within the brain and the body. Uh, let me pause this for written. 